Is Boondog there? It's my main man right there. The <laughs> the Aaron Boone Report is brought to you by Jersey Mike's, the official sub sandwich shop of the New York Yankees, and by Winters Brothers Waste Systems, conveniently rent the dumpster online at wintersbros.com, Long Island's number one choice for waste removal. Winters, B-R-O-S, bros like toes, dot com, and by Spectrum Mobile. Well, people getting paid on this, huh? Get unlimited talks, text, and data. Save up to 40%. Go SpectrumMobile.com today. Aaron Boone, it's Craig and Evan. How you doing, buddy? Hello, guys. Well, uh, happy opening day almost. Happy there we go. opening day, Listen, Eve. We got six months together. <laughs> oh, man. Here we go. <laughs> hey, buddy. Hi, <laughs> buddy. All right. First and foremost, let's get the serious stuff out of the way. How are you physically? How did the procedure go now a few weeks after it? How do you feel? I know it's a very personal thing, so I do recognize that. I don't want to be sensitive to it. But for Yankee fans that actually care about the individuals in the jerseys, walk us through uh, how you doing. Um, thank you. I'm doing great. Um, it, it was a game changer for me. Literally, when I was wheeling out of surgery, um, I felt night and day difference. Um, I, I think the biggest thing is it made me realize how crappy I was feeling uh, all winter long. It just uh, and it kind of came to a head, I guess, that week where I just was, you know, getting short of breath and everything. And I, I feel great. I feel like myself again, and um, all good. Good to hear. That's amazing. It's like, and it's that simple. It's like overnight, yeah. bang, just feeling better. So that's great. So good for you on that. All right, baseball stuff. Aaron Judge, of course, doesn't play the last three spring training games. When I first saw it, I said to Evan, dude just hit a 900-foot home run, so he got off the schneid. We don't need anything else from him. Let's go into the season healthy. I know he was under the weather. Give Yankee fans an update on what's going on with Aaron. Yeah, Aaron's, Aaron's good to go. Um, it was as simple as that. He was a little under the weather, a little you know, sore throat, stuffed up. I, I, think, I think we had a few of our guys kind of go through some allergy stuff. Uh, he was he was scheduled two days off Saturday and Sunday, and then was going to play that last game before we broke camp. But uh, wasn't feeling great, so we held him out. And you know, when you do have any symptoms like that, you got to go through protocols and all that. But he's good to go. He's 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 ready. And you know, and I was one of them. Most Yankee fans were freaking out, saying, "Here we go again." Aaron Judge is hurt again because I think that for most Yankee fans, the biggest fear going into this season, like it's been the last few years, is keeping these guys on the field. So for you, we're back to 162. No more 60 game season. What can you do to keep Aaron Judge and Giancarlo stand? Those two guys specifically, because they have missed a lot of time Bubble over wrap. the years. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Is it going to be expect off days once a week? What are you going to do to keep these guys healthy? Well, I mean, definitely, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm going to give them their days here and there, but, you know, hopefully, you know, hopefully when you have a strong bench, um, you're able to do that. And that over the long haul keeps guys healthy. Um, we're also betting on, you know, the fact that we feel like as we've kind of overhauled our strength and conditioning and training set up over the last now, you know, year and a half going back to last off season, we feel like a lot of the things that have taken hold or I guess have taken hold. And we feel like we're going to start to reap the benefits with all our guys. And hopefully that's the case with Giancarlo and Aaron. They're, they're in great physical condition right now. Um, I feel like they're in a way better place than they have been in several years as far as, uh, you know, their preparation and just their, you know, condition and ability to hopefully withstand the rigors of an everyday season. And, and now, you know, we'll see. We'll, we'll, I'll try to protect them where I can, but um, also expect them to be able to post a lot. Where is, because there's a couple of guys dealing with injuries. We know Luke Voigt's going to be out for about a month. But what about Miguel Andujar? Because I thought when Voigt went down, boy, this would have been an opportunity created for him to get at-bats. I think that's been kind of his biggest issue. He's been blocked. Where is he with the hand health-wise? He's doing better. He actually, the hand kind of popped up and, you know, kind of became like almost like a carpal tunnel situation. And he actually finally started to feel better and, and last week started hitting off the tee, but then that kind of aggravated it again. So, 
Um, I would say he's getting close to resuming baseball activities, but, you know, he's been down now for, you know, a few weeks. So he's going to need a little bit of ramp up once he does, you know, and it's going to be a kind of a graduation thing of hitting off the tee, soft toss, hitting on the field, and then got to obviously get some live at bat. So I would say he's a little ways off from being a consideration, um, but he is making some progress. Talking to Aaron Boone, as we'll do uh, every week throughout the baseball season, Look, you, you took a couple hits injury-wise, as a lot of teams do uh, coming out of spring training. But you also, you know, kind of rediscovered Domingo Herman. All the off-field stuff aside, he looked money good this spring. And if he's anywhere close to where he was a couple of years ago, forget about being your fifth starter. And I know he's going to start in the opening series and Tyone's not. He becomes a major factor for you in the rotation. So I, I wonder... As you went into the spring, that's got to be best case scenario for you when it comes to your starting rotation, right? Yeah, I've been I've been blown away, frankly, by how good Domingo's looked since since day one of camp. Um, you know, he came in in really good condition um, from his first bullpen session on into facing hitters, um, and then on into the game. It's just been. The level of polish has really surprised me. Like I thought there'd be a little rust to work off, and and that hasn't been the case at all. He's been really sharp. The stuff has been really good. He's had elite command of three pitches, and feel like he's ready to go out and 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 match up with anyone. I feel great about where he's at and excited about the season uh, potentially in front of him. You guys seem perfect to have a six-man rotation with Cole every five days because obviously you want your best pitcher every five days because you're right about Domingo Herman. He's earned being back in this rotation. But Davey Garcia, when we saw him last year, and I know he had his tough moments in spring training, but for the most part looked good. To, to me, he deserves to be in the rotation too. Can you see Davey being inserted every once in a while, especially you know to keep Tyone fresh? to keep even Corey Kluber fresh. Can you see almost a, a pseudo six-man rotation to start the year at some point? I definitely think there'll be, you know, let's, you know, kind of just trying to look at it, uh, you know, weeks at a time or a month at a time. And, and we know in April we have four days off in the month of April. Um, we, we see a couple of slots where it might make some sense to insert that six starter, which I think there's a good chance we would do that. And not only those guys, Kluber and Tyone, and, and Her- but Herman and Montgomery, and even to an extent, you know, Garrett. We're going to value making sure those guys are, you know, getting those extra days, limiting enough, you know, from an inning standpoint. And if we can do that by occasionally inserting a six starter, especially while we're healthy, um, I think there's some real value in that. Well, you bring up Garrett, and I'm curious, and I think this goes for every team in baseball. We had such a weird year last year. He only threw 70 innings, whatever it was, 68 innings. Mm-hmm. Is there going to be a part of you that says, I got to keep that in mind? It's not like he's coming off a normal 200-inning year where you may want to restrict him a little bit because of that? Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I think it'll be very – very small restrictions. Like I, I, I would hope that he doesn't throw the most innings of his career this year. Um, but I expect him to be a workhorse, but we will value, you know, giving him the six day, uh, you know, when we have an off day, we won't be in a hurry to rush him up right now. Obviously he's going on. The plan is for him to go on the fifth day, this first time through, but it looks like the rest of the month kind of having him go on the sixth day. And I think there's going to be some value in that. Uh, for him, and hopefully it's something that benefits him at the back end of the season and what we hope is the postseason. But um, I also think there's going to be a lot of benefits for him from last year of having that truncated season where he, you know, because I, I think he's even a little more fresh right now than, than he is coming off a normal season. And the one thing about last year that, you know, even though it was a truncated season, those guys were, were – pitching throughout quarantine right he was throwing a lot of mound innings so it's not necessarily your normal shortened inning season because most of these guys were pitching you know all through the summer months in preparation and and the same can even be said for like Corey Kluber like so even though he didn't log a lot of innings or pitch much at all he pitched a little more than than just the lack of a 60-game season. Talking Aaron Boone, I want to ask you a non-Yankee question, just because you've experienced it as a player and 
I guess less as a manager, but I know you've experienced it. You know, a- across the street, you know, the Mets have this huge offer out for Francisco Lindor, and it's all public, you know, $300 plus million. In your experience, when you have a, you know, a prime guy in your team and a contract negotiation is playing out publicly in that manner, do we as fans put too much into it as to how much of a distraction, quote unquote, that could be? Do do players talk about it in the locker room? Is it a daily topic of conversation? And just walk us through your experience with all due respect to him not being on your team. It's not your deal. But in your experience, when teams go through that, how, how big a deal is it to a team in a locker room? I, I would say everyone, everyone in every situation is unique. I, I would, I would liken it to the trade deadline. You know, every year we we get around, you know, the trade deadline and it's all these rumors and you hear different names rumored and it's like, how does that affect a player that's going through that? I think it 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 runs across the gamut. I, I think there's guys that it really does affect and it has and it can it can impact them negatively. I also think there's people that thrive off of it. Mm. Um, and, and I think there just comes down to a level of professionalism that, you know, each individual is going to handle it a little bit different. And does it become a distraction or not? Kind of depends on the team and the individual and the, and, and the parties negotiating with one another. But, you know, my understanding in the Lindor thing is it sounds like there's a pretty hard deadline and, and, you know, so every, everyone's a little bit different is the best right. I can say. We're talking Aaron Boone, manager of the Yankees. So tomorrow you got a one run lead in the ninth inning. No Chapman. He's still serving that suspension. <laughs> Who are we going to? Luizaga, Chad Green, Darren Oda. My guess is you're gonna to go to Chad Green, am I right? Um it's possible. I mean it depends who pitches the seventh, the eighth, the ninth, where we are in the lineup. I I think any of those three guys you mentioned will be in play. Um, you know, and if if the biggest spot or, or the right matchup makes sense to send a guy out there in the seventh, for example, um, I'll do that. So it, it just kind of depends on uh, where we are in the in the Blue Jays lineup. I hope we're in that situation where we're thinking about closing out a game, but I would feel comfortable um, with any of those three guys you mentioned potentially being in that situation. What is your feeling for the sense of this bullpen? Zach Britton's obviously out for a while. Justin Wilson's going to miss us a little bit of time. I mentioned Jonathan Lewisega, man. Every time I watch him out of the bullpen, I, I think he's got huge potential. Do you look at him as a guy that needs to step up? I know Lucas Lutke made the team, the left-hander who hasn't pitched in the majors in five years. How do you kind of look at this bullpen with guys needing to step up with Britton out and obviously for the first two days of Roldis being out? Yeah, um, I think Jonathan Lewisega were obviously, I've been, you know, really excited about him for the last couple of years. He's had some things that have tripped him up a little bit. Like last year, he was really rolling and, and pitching really well for us, and he got he got sick and missed about uh, – you know, two weeks, and it was kind of towards the end of the season. I don't think he ever really regained his form as we got into, you know, the the final games and and into the postseason, but he's got a ton of talent. Um, He's got, he's got all the weapons and the pitches to be really good. And we're going to need guys like him to step up and, and, and assume a greater role potentially, you know, while we're waiting on Britt and while we're waiting on Wilson to come back, hopefully real soon. Um, and then, you know, guys like, you know, Nelson that we're really excited about that kind of popped for us a little bit last year and established himself a little bit and then came in this spring and really lit it up. We feel like he's really capable of getting some high impact outs. Um, it's Litke, not Lukey. Litke. So there you go. There you go. Litke. Thank you. And we're excited. You know, he, he faced a lot of competition. I mean, this is the best I've felt about in spring training, our kind of 13 to 20th pitcher who are kind of competing for those final couple of slots. And it was pretty stiff competition. And, and frankly, he earned it. He earned the opportunity. He's throwing the ball great. So we'll see, um, you know, where his role kind of evolves to. Um, but a number of guys are, you know, 
are going to be counted you, on to step up while we hold, hold the fort until you, we get some guys back. You got a little bit of a problem with Litke. What kind of nickname could you give him? He's already got the E at the end. Litke E? Like, what do you call him? Uh, I call him Lucas. Lucas. Oh, you're very official with him. You go the okay. other way. You take the E off and you make something else of it. <laughs> hey, hockey. <laughs> <laughs> right? Last baseball yeah. thing for you, Aaron, for me at least. Uh, Gary's going to catch Garrett uh, out of the gate. Is that like a game uh, start by start kind of thing in regards to how comfortable Garrett is with him behind the dish, behind the plate, or no? Um, we'll we'll see. Um, you know, I I feel like those two will work fine together. Um, you know, I know Higgy. I plan on catching Higgy a lot with him as well. Um, I just want to you know be in a position to where you know we feel really good about having both guys back there. I think last year, I think. I think it we took it a little too far, you know, the narrative that it was more in the 60 game season and you know Garrett kind of took off with Higgy back there and it just and with Gary struggling it just kind of was easier to just hey this is going to be Higgy's day. So it it may turn into something like that. We'll just kind of let it play out, but uh, I'm comfortable with both of them back there handling them. Hey, did you see the story uh, about Tanaka where he said one of the reasons he went back uh, to Japan was that his wife and I guess his five-year-old now had some uh, tough times uh, here in New York uh, over the course of the last year or so. Were you aware of any of that stuff? I was not. I, I, I heard about the story. I haven't read the story or seen it, but I did hear some talk of that. Um, and and obviously that's, um, you know. Yeah, it's crazy. It sucks. It yeah, sucks. No I doubt. Mean, you know, I, did, I, I just wanted ultimately to, that wasn't the reason. Yeah, I just wondered if you guys were aware of that. I know when he, when he said it, I guess in a Japanese newspaper or magazine article since he's been back home or you know, playing for Rakuten, Yo, know, everyone here seemed like totally shocked that that well, was even a story. I, so the update on that is that I had read yesterday, it got lost in translation. It was an opinion by the author that Tanaka oh, actually never said that. It seemed like that. they said Tanaka yeah, said no, it. No, no, we, we all had that same impression. Yeah. You just said Aaron did too. So it's, I guess it came out that so, the reporter was so giving So the translation was off. Yes. Got it. it. Yeah, thank Or God, the, the reporter's is... interpretation yeah, was, of what he said was off. A, yeah, I don't know. Strange. I have no idea. How, how has spring training been? You know, you dealt with the 60-game season with all the protocols, everything that was going on. You've obviously had some fans in the stands. You still have really tight protocols. How has this spring training been, especially compared to everything you had to deal with last year during the 60-game season? Better, better. I mean, everyone's obviously way more equipped and knows how to go about it, and 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 things are just across the board much more efficient. Um, and and we're I feel like we're slowly but surely, um, you know, some of the restrictions are loosening. Um, you know, the next thing is I know as teams become vaccinated, uh, you know, kind of as a whole or or a large percentage, then some of the the uh, restrictions really become loosened. So I long for those days, like so many people, uh, you know, I'm, I'm tired of wearing a mask all yep. the time, <laughs> having meetings with that. And, and hopefully we're getting to a point where the, that light is coming. Um, and, but it's definitely been much better and, and much, uh, we've been able to be a lot more efficient. I feel like just because we've been through it and we know a little bit what we're doing now. One last thing. Is Jay Bruce the guy at first base? I know you were saying Mike Tockman's working out a little bit over there. Obviously, we know DJ can move over to first base. Is it going to basically be Jay Bruce's job until Luke Voigt is back? Yeah, I, I plan on Jay being there a lot. And and then I'll move over, you know, whether it's every few days, whatever it is, when I give Jay a day off, um, I'll move DJ over there, and that slides weighed in at second base. Um so that that's kind of the plan. Uh, when when Jay's down, it'll probably be um, DJ at first base. Well, six o'clock today, Aaron. I announced my fandom, as you know, and uh, you made my decision a little bit easier. Now we're talking to Louis Rojas at five. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but at six o'clock, I got a balloon on my left and a balloon on my right. <laughs> I don't know which is <laughs> wait, which one I'm popping yet, but I think you made my decision maybe a little bit easier today. So I thank you for that. You're welcome. I don't know if is is this really even the decision? Wow, 
It's a very good That's point. That's a very confident it's comment. It's Yankee baseball after Very all. confident as a, comment. As a very... I mean, it's, it's one thing if you're Evan and you're born into it and everything, <laughs> but if, 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 you're, if you're weighing your options here, yeah. um, you know, we'll take you with the stripers. <laughs> I liked it. I appreciate the invitation. Oh, Aaron, very Thank curious. You. Leave it alone. No, no, it's not leave about it alone. that. It's not about that, I promise Just you. leave it alone. He invited me. I, That's it. Okay. Are you having a virtual running out to the first baseline tomorrow, or are you guys going to run out? This is very important to me, Aaron. I believe it's opening day when everyone runs out on the first baseline. Maybe no high fives. I understand it. Are we getting the true opening day ceremonies? What do you know? I will be running out to the line and greeting my guys. That's right, because it's opening day. Excuse That's me. Right. That's right. You're a Mets fan. I understand. It's but I don't Yankee prefer- Stadium. Okay. Am I, not, am I not allowed to go? Well, what's interesting to me is that you're a diehard Met fan. You're not going to Mets opening day, but because you're going to Yankees I opening day. I work on the radio. Aaron, well, do you understand this? Uh, we, we, the, we, we air the Yankees. I'm going to go to the game. Am yeah. I welcome to Yankee Stadium? Because you're a baseball fan, not a Mets fan. Evan, I, I would like to see you, you know, over left or right field, hanging over the wall, beating on the wall when when we got a little rally. Well, that's going. not that's great. that's not going to happen. But I will be there smiling with my scorecard. Okay? And we look forward to talking to you every week during the season. <laughs> Thank you. Be well. 